Welcome back to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. So most high school students at public schools in New Jersey can't go back into the classrooms, but they can go onto the playing field for practice and games. High school sports in New Jersey got the green light from the New Jersey State Interscholastic Athletic Association. I spoke with Colleen McGuire, who heads up that organization, about the decision. Hi, and thanks so much for spending the time with us today. I wanted to find out how you made your decision exactly to allow high schools in New Jersey to play fall sports, and I assume winter sports as well, right? Yes, as of right now, yes, winter sports, we have, we have them scheduled. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll worry about them after we get the fall season, you know, going uh, next week. Um, so it was definitely a, a lot of uh, people involved in not only the decision making, but the planning. You know, we had a medical task force. We had, a, you know, a sports advisory task force that was comprised of athletic directors that was helping us carve out the dates and the seasons and how we can make it all work. Um, and then you had uh, officers from our executive committee, which is really our governing body. Um, and then we had input from superintendents and principals throughout the state, you know, as school administrators. So we've met weekly all summer, you know, uh, assessing what, what can and cannot occur. Um, you know, all along, you know, June, July, or like September, still far away. We don't know what the health of New Jersey is gonna be like, but all we can do is put a plan in place but make sure we have a backup plan for every scenario that we think could impact that initial plan. Is one of the backup plans to just call off sports if, if it gets too bad? Yes. So, yeah. So we kind of then soon went down the path of, okay, once we kind of grew comfortable that we were going to move our indoor sports until later in the year, you know, um, outdoor sports have been played all summer, you know, and they've been tested. And I think everyone from a health perspective was very comfortable from football to girls tennis, that anything outside is really pretty safe. Um, so indoor sports haven't been tested as much. And you know, in the time we were making our plans, the indoor limitations were still pretty strict in that they were gonna be limited to no more than 25 people in, in, in an indoor environment. So knowing that you have that limitation and a little uncertainty as to the health circumstances uh, impacting indoor environment, the outdoor, yeah, we're, as long as New Jersey and the community stay healthy, we're comfortable outdoor sports can be played. You talked about certain restrictions, and I, and I got the uh, maximum capacity. I understand that. But uh, some of the other restrictions are impossible. It's impossible to social distance in football, yeah. for instance. And, but what are the other restrictions? Are there temperatures taken? Uh, is there a mask that's required? What are some of them? Yeah, these are just, those fall under guidelines that NJSIA has adopted for our return to play. So yes, yeah, some of the uh, requirements are definitely face coverings. Um, so any official coach, player, you know, they're in a face covering unless there's a few exceptions that the Department of Health allows. And one of those is being if they're involved in high intensity aerobic or anaerobic exercise. So clearly when they're on the field of play and competing, they do not have to wear a face covering. Same goes for the officials. But when they're on the sidelines, yes, they, they need to be in a face covering. It does seem odd, though, doesn't it, to you that many schools are not allowing kids to go back into the classrooms and yet they can go on the playing fields and play sports? Um, yes, but again, because we're outside. I think that's part of the reason why some weren't comfortable yet going with the indoor sports. Um, and I think that in, at least in New Jersey, a lot of the decisions to start the remote school year was more logistic concerns about uh, how they're going to function the school day, how they're going to tra provide transportation in a safe way. And also many schools were coming up to uh, not having enough of the PPE supplies in, whether it be the, the masks, the hand sanitizers, you know, so there's a whole other level of logistics when you're talking about coordinating, you know, many kids getting in and out of a school building versus, you know, the average school, probably 25 to 30 percent of their student population will be participating in a fall sport. You have children who are student athletes. Yes. So, in your heart, you wanted to go back from the absolutely. very beginning, right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think any parent of a teenager today has seen the toll that this is taking on their their, their child. Um, you know, your heart breaks for them because these are really precious years. And they go really fast. Um, so anything that you can do to give lift their spirits and give them a little sense of normalcy right now is, you know, going to go a long way. Um, again, the weather's nice. We can be outside. The kids need the normalcy, especially for those kids that are in a remote only learning environment. You really get concerned about their social and emotional well-being. If they're not getting that in-person socialization with their teammates, 
you know, in, in, in a nice, po you know, positive environment with their coaches, um, you really kind of grow concerned with some of those kids could really be at risk for, you know, in mental health, you know, making sure that they aren't falling into depression. Um, and, you know, all of those common sense things that are impacting adults, I think are magnified when you talk about teenagers. You're, you're keeping a close eye on this, right? So you're, so you're watching, what are you watching for? Uh, how could you change your decisions or change your protocol if, if this happens, what, what are you exactly looking for? Cases? Yeah, well, uh, luckily, luckily, now that we're in the school year, right, our New Jersey Department of Health, they have their return to school guidelines set out, and they took New Jersey, and they put the counties into six geographic regions, and they have a health dashboard that they can monitor now, you know, I think, you know, uh, hospitalizations, positivity rates, transmission rates, you know, uh, new, new infections. So that's going to be the, that's going to be the source of the data that's gonna drive the decision. So if the Department of Health starts to lean towards moving a region or even an individual school district into a red zone, and meaning you have to shut down because of health, you're not, you're not remote learning just because of logistics or lack of PPE supplies. You're remote learning because of health. Then, yes, clearly athletics will be suspended. Well, that's fascinating that it's not just the team that you're looking at. You're looking at the region. And, the, and it sounds like the decision will be made on the region, not necessarily on the cases that come up in a particular team. Yep. And last week we put out in conjunction with the Department of Health, we put out COVID protocols that are specific to athletics. So now administrators, local health officials, they know, okay, one positive test case, don't panic. You don't have to shut down your whole team for 14 days. You know, if you have two or more that are un in, in, a, in a, you know, a 14 day period and they're unrelated and you can't determine the source of them, then maybe you have to like start considering maybe you need to quarantine the whole team, you know, and that's what the coaches need to monitor. Well, I know you, and especially the decision, uh, the decision that the organization made was uh, heralded by many coaches, parents, and students across the country. To you, they're, they are, you are their hero. At this yeah. point. So I appreciate your decision, and I hope that they get to continue playing throughout the school year. That would be wonderful for everybody. Colleen McGuire, COO of the New Jersey State Interscholastic Athletic Association. When Jersey Matters comes right back, I'll talk to the reporter who wrote the political article that Phil Murphy is the most powerful governor in America. We're coming right back.